Hello there, my name is Maria and I'm the Creative Italian. <clears throat> Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're here. And tonight I'm gonna to be sharing, well it's nighttime in Atlanta anyway. I'm gonna be sharing with you how to make this very easy necklace, beaded necklace. And the reason I call it a Mother's Day necklace I mean, it doesn't have to be just for your mom, but Mother's Day is right around the corner. Today is April 26, 2022. May is around the corner. Mother's Day will be here before you know it. And maybe you don't want to buy her anything. Maybe you really want to make her something. And you want something that's easy and simple. And um, that, But that looks really great, right? Nothing's more wonderful than giving somebody a handmade gift, especially your mom. <laughs> I used to give my mom handmade gifts all the time. I used to love making her things, you know? Okay, so, but before we get started, um, if you <clears throat> would like to know when I upload a new video to my channel, just hit the subscribe button. And if you would also do me a favor and give me a likes or a thumbs up if you do like my video, it'll really help me grow my channel and so that more people out there will find me if those people that are looking for what I have to offer. And also, if you have any comments or questions, you're working on a project, you're stuck and you need some help, absolutely put it in my comments. I respond to people in less than 24 hours. If there's something on my channel that you're not sure about, if there's something you wanna learn and you don't see it on my channel, maybe I can do that for you or do another video on that. Go ahead and leave that in the comments too. I'm just, I am more than happy to help you guys out. I really am. I love doing my YouTube channels. I'm still pretty new at it, so I'm still, <laughs> I'm still learning. But um, I do, you know, appreciate all of you that have subscribed and have, you know, helped my channel to grow. I really, really do appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around so you can see my desk. And <clears throat> let's talk about what we're going to need but we also want some cord i am using uh, wax cotton cord it's five millimeter and it's from fire mountain you want 24 gauge wire some snippers uh needle point flat nose pliers snippers this is a 2.35 uh, crochet hook, which is perfect with, for this size, for the 0 0.5 millimeter cord, a round nose plier, a ruler, or a measuring tape. You'll want a jump, whoop, you want a jump ring, and this is about 10, 11 millimeters, and a lobster clasp is what I'm going to be using for this project. You want six millimeter jump rings and you'll want um as many of these as many beads we're using 18 beads so i've got 18 jump rings and you want 18 beads for this project there's going to be nine beads on each side of the pendant you don't have to use a pendant but this is the pendant i'm going to be putting on there you will also want some quick drying glue and this is uh super glue a piece of paper I'm using a sticky note and a toothpick. And I think that pretty much covers it, you guys. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we want to make some chain links like I did on this green cord right here. This is the cord I'm gonna be using for the necklace, okay? This is the same 0 0.5 millimeter, but it's just lime green from firemountain.com. Um, so we're gonna make a chain link this is the basic of crochet, you guys. I have it in my earlier video, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Those of you that are more advanced and intermediate and advanced, I, ho I hope you won't be too bored with this part. <laughs> but, um, but I do wanna show it for people that you know are not familiar. So if you're right-handed, you wanna hold the cord. In your left hand, using your index finger, wrap the cord twice. Take the cord that's the closest to your knuckle back here, and pull it forward. Then take the cord behind this piece and pull it forward. Then take the cord from behind that cord and pull up and you have a slip knot and it's too big so you just want to make it small 
so that it's just big enough for your crochet hook. Now, we are going to make a 15 inch length chains. I'm not gonna do it on this card, but I'm gonna just show you all how to get this chain link. If you are right-handed, you wanna hold the hook in your right hand between your middle finger, your thumb, and your index finger. And you wanna drape the cord over your index finger. Then hold hold underneath the hook. You wanna keep this taut, tight, between your thumb and your index finger on your left hand, but you're gonna flip it around if you're left-handed, it's gonna be in, in your right hand. So take the hook, go underneath the cord, and pull through the hole. Go under the cord, catch it, and pull through. Just like that. And go under, over, grab it, pull through. Under, over, grab it, pull through. Under, over, grab it, pull through. And that is it, that's all that this is. So you want 15 inches of that because this necklace is gonna be end up being about 16 inches in length. It's gonna be a choker, basically. And when you get finished, you want about three and a half to four inches of extra cord on each end so that you have plenty of cord to add your toggle clasp or lobster clasp or whatever you plan on doing. Now, we're gonna take the cord and divide it in half, just like this. Uh, let me see here for a minute. <laughs> no, let's not do that part first, sorry guys. All right, go ahead and you wanna cut 18 pieces of 24 gauge wire. And you want, e these are these are about eight millimeter beads, except for the butterfly is bigger. It doesn't matter because an inch and a half piece of wire is plenty long enough for that piece as well. So take, <clears throat> take your inch and a half wire and go ahead and put it right there at the end, very tip of your, round nose plier and just start turning. Just turn three times and you should have a, a, a loop like that, just like that. That's what it should look like. Now this is flat in between here. So I could just take that, put it, nestle it between the, the um, plates and just pull up just like that. Or you could take your flat nose pliers and do it. So basically, this is what it's gonna look like. Just like that. Excuse me, let me show it a little differently. Yeah, it's gonna look just like that. It's gonna be like so, okay? You want 18 of these because you need that many for the beads. If my suggestion is that you do your cording then you go ahead and add your beads to your wire and get your beads ready. And all you're gonna do, if I can see the hole, you guys. <laughs> Where's the hole? Okay, so just slip that onto your bead. And sometimes you might have to take that little end that you just did and sort of push on it a little bit just to flatten it out. All right, now, what's ever left over, you're gonna go, instead of on the tip, you're gonna go sort of in the middle of your round nose plier, and you're gonna turn, one turn, pull the, pull the pliers out, reinsert it in the same spot, and just keep turning until you get down to its flush, to your flush at the bead hole. Just like that. And you feel like it's tight enough. Yep. Okay, and that's what you have. Right. 
Looks just like that. Let me just straighten this out just a little bit. Okay. So you're gonna do 18 of those. All right, here we go again. Take your wire, go to the tip, to the very end, turn, and then count one, two, and three. And then you could t grab the tip and just push your wire up so it looks like that. Well, the reason I don't want to use a head pin is because Well, let's put this, the head pins are generally stiffer, which is okay, all right? No problem there. Um, this cord is lighter in weight, the 24 gauge. And so I know that when I add these beads to the cord, it's not gonna push down and drag the hole, if you know what I'm talking about. See how nice and light those, they hang? They're not dragging the cord down, and that was my goal, and that's why I'm not using a head pin, because the head pins tend to be thicker. And, you know, they're, they're just a lot thicker, and maybe they will pull it down, maybe they won't pull it down, but you know what? I know for sure that it won't pull down by using the 24 gauge, okay? All right, so you wanna go ahead and get all your beads ready, which I've got my beads ready. And then take your cord and just match it up on each end, just like that. And did I say you need four inches, three to four inches on each end? I think I did say that, but I'll say it again because for some reason I thought maybe I didn't say it. Okay, divide it in half. Okay, now, now we're going to take our cord and we're going to divide it in half. And we're going to kind of eyeball it. This is the middle of the cord. Right here. I'm going to just keep my finger there so I <laughs> remember where I'm at. Okay, and I'm going to take, we're going to take the pendant and line it up just like so and add it. I'm going to add the pendant first. So that should be right. Yeah. Or if you want to measure it out, you can measure it out too. Whatever works best for you. And then take your six millimeter jump rings. I did mention that you need these six millimeter jump rings for all your beads. Go ahead and open those up. And you're gonna add those, we're gonna add those to our cord here. And my suggestion is staying on the bottom loop, not the top loop. And you wanna be consistent. In other words, you don't wanna just put these in just in any, in the top of the loop, the bottom of the loop. You definitely want to put them so they all hang so everything hangs on the bottom loop. Otherwise, they'll just get all flipped around and you'll have beads going through, the, going flipping through the top. You'll have them flipping through the bottom. And when people try to wear them, wear the necklace, it, it just won't lay right on their neck. Well, so I'm gonna add that. And as you can see, when I'm holding it, I'm slipping it through the bottom loop. Can you see that? Okay. Once you get started, you know, with the beads and the pendant, you'll be able to make, you know, it'll be easy. Because sometimes look at that like, like, okay, now which is the top and which is the bottom? <laughs> Okay, there you go. So there's the pendant. 
okay? So she's hanging right there in the middle. And then on this particular necklace, after I put the pendant on, I basically counted over, let me see. When I put them on, I counted over in between each bead. I put the bead on and then I counted one, two, three, and four. Four loops before, and on the fourth loop is where I added another bead. So it's four loops in between each bead. Maybe it might be off a little bit, you know, sometimes in between the beads, but for the most part, it's just count, put your bead in, don't count that loop, but count the next ones over. One, two, three, four, put the bead in. Or if you wanna put them in every hole, you can do that too, but I'm just going on what I did with this particular necklace. Okay, and it's very, it's random as far as the beads themselves. I'm just, I'm not trying to create a pattern on, on this. I want it just to be more organic. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna grab my other pliers to put the beads on because they are a little bit easier to work with opening them up. All right, so I got the bead here and I'm just holding it up and I'm counting one, let's see, one, two, three, four. There's the hole right there. Just like that. So your bent nose pliers sometimes can be a lot easier to put your beads on with the jump ring, especially when you're working with a real small jump ring like this. It's a little easier to put on. So hold it up and count over one, two, three, and four. And it's real obvious when I hold it up because I can see it. That is, if I opened up the jump ring bit wide enough. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> just hold it between your fingers, count over one, two, three, four. Come on now. Gosh. All right, there we go. So you can put the jump ring in first and then put your bead on or add it to the jump ring and then add the jump ring to the cord. It doesn't really matter. Whatever works for you. And again, open up your jump ring. Now, when you open up your jump ring, you wanna open it up with your pliers going in the opposite direction. This one's going forward, backwards and this one's going forward. You don't want to open them up too much either because um, it can distort your jump ring and then you might not be able to get a nice flush close. Like, oh, I picked up the same bead. Nope, don't want that. There you go. No, I picked up the same bead again. Come on. like that. So there you go. So far, you can see that they're just hanging, you know, they're all dangling right straight down from the loop. So if I were to take the next one and said, put it up at the top, add it to the top of the loop of the chain, the top of the chain, these would be flipping in all different directions. Now, if you wanted to create a pattern doing that, that's okay. But if you want all of these to lay flat up against the skin and they're not going in a million directions, then you definitely you know, want to do it this way, okay? All right. I 
think this time I'm going to open it, the jump ring, and I'm going to add the bead. You know what? I think it's a little bit easier to add the bead to the jump ring and then put the jump ring in. Okay, one, two, three, four. Boom. Well, it's a lot easier, you guys, and I'm not picking up the pliers twice. Okay, so I just came up with this idea last night as I was getting ready for bed. And I'm like, okay, I want to do something for you guys for Mother's Day. What can I do? And I'm not just, me, I'm not gonna get on here and just do something just to be doing it. I'm just not gonna do it. I have to be doing something that I feel like, you know, is valuable. One, two, three, four. And of course, I didn't go to bed until really late last night. <laughs> Because I got really excited with this necklace. Now look how pretty that is so far. Isn't that pretty? Okay. To take our lobster claw, lobster claw, and our jump ring. And on one side, we're going to tie the lobster claw. And on one side, we're going to tie the jump ring. Okay, so it's real easy. All you're gonna do is tie knots. You're gonna slip it through. And you're just gonna tie a couple of knots, just like this. So easy. Now, when you tie your knot, you wanna get close to the loops as close to that as you can, okay? So tie one knot, <clears throat> work it through, tie another one. And get on top of the chain. I said loop, but I meant the chain, chain links. You wanna tie it on top of the chain links. So it looks like, so it looks like that, you guys. Okay, all right, now what you wanna do just don't cut this off yet. Just leave that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got allergies. Terrible, terrible, terrible allergies. Then you're going to come here. And you're going to do the same thing here. Go ahead and tie a knot. Somehow I ended up with a little bit more free cord between the bead and the lobster claw that I did on the end with the, with the jump ring. I don't know why, but I did. Unless I just got things off center a little bit, but it doesn't matter because um, you all get the general idea. So I would tie three knots on top of the chains, just like that. All right, there you go. See, you got those nice, you got those knots right there. All right, now what you're gonna do is, to make it nice and secure, you wanna take your super glue and add super glue to your sticky note or your piece of paper. And you know, sometimes I use a popsicle stick. You don't need very much. And then take your super glue and add it on the front and the back side of your knot. Pick it up with a toothpick. and dab it on there, let it dry, and then do the same thing on this side where your jump ring is. You just take your super glue and just dab it on both sides of your knot. You know what? Necklace, my necklaces never come apart. Never, 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 and I've done it this way 
for the last, what, six or seven years, I guess. They never come apart. All right, now, go back to the lobster claw. Now that it's had a little minute to dry, and snip off the cord, and then take your pliers and press down. And that way, it's not completely dry, it's still a little bit wet, so that when you take your pliers and you press down, it goes into the glue and it makes it really secure. And then do the same thing on the other end. Yep. And then take your pliers and just smash that in. <laughs> There's no other way for me to describe it except smash it in. Yeah, press it in there real good. It just makes it really super secure, like that. So there you have it, you guys. Let me tilt the camera up just a little bit. So there you have it. Let's see if I can get it. Is that not just wonderful? this necklace. I just think it's great. So much fun. Somebody would really enjoy this necklace. Or maybe you're going to just make it for yourself. <laughs> hey, maybe you're a mom and you're going to make your own mother's day gift. <laughs> Who knows? Nothing wrong with that, mom. You deserve mom's deserve. I think this turned out so nice. And you could just have use all different colors of cord. You know, just do whatever you want to do. Okay, guys, thanks again for stopping by. And um, like I said, if you want to get notified when I upload a new YouTube uh, new video to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you like my video to help me out here, um, raise awareness of my videos, if you'll hit the like button if you like the video. If you have any questions, comments, something you might want to learn, you're working on a project, you need some help, you, Absolutely, I'm here to help you. Glad to help. Leave those in the comments. I always respond in less than 24 hours. And hope wherever you are in the world out there in cyberspace, I hope you have a great day or evening wherever you are. Okay, bye-bye.